Lately on Tuesdays, we have been reading Tom Kenyon's The Octurian Anthology. And if you've been following along, you know a couple of weeks ago, we went through the channeling of an ascended master named Sunat Kumara. Well, in this channeling, Sunat Kumara referred to a time when he came down to planet Earth. At this time, he came to a continent, a country, that we in our modern day call Japan. And he ended up landing on a very special mountain. Well, when I read this, of course, the nerd in me had to go and look up this particular mountain in Japan. And of course, I was not let down. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, such a very, very special thank you to all of our Patreons and our producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. You guys are the OGs. You are truly, truly the humans who are keeping this channel going. I love each and every one of you and your support means the world to me. If you would like to join the Patreon or the producer community here at Esoteric Atlanta, as always, there is a link down in the description box below. And before we get into our deep dive, a brief word from our sponsor. If you are like me, then you love a good face mask. Now, I kid you not, I have been obsessed with face masks since I was a teenager. I have memories of being in high school and having slumber parties with my girlfriends and trying different face masks. This has literally been something that I have been obsessed with my whole life. Now, the problem with me is that I have very dry skin, so I have to be very, very careful with the type of face mask that I use, otherwise it will dry my skin out too much and that itself starts to cause some problems. Well, of course, ASEA just released its own face mask. It ran for a trial run last month, and it looks like it's possibly, potentially here to stay. Now, of course, once the mask was released, and they were gonna be doing the mask, I had to order one, just so I could try it out, because again, girl loves a good face mask i was a little bit nervous i'm gonna be honest with you guys i was a little bit nervous that it might dry my skin out but nonetheless i thought what's the harm in trying i've loved all of their face care system i've been using up until this point so let's just try the mask well true story i got the mask in last week and so that night when i got it in i washed my face i put this mask on when you which you leave on for about 10 minutes set my bath up, my, night, my nightly bath, put my Epsom salts in, all that kind of stuff, grabbed my murder mystery book. I'm always reading some murder mystery book. Got in the bath, soaked for like an hour, washed the face mask off, got out of the bath, did the rest of my skin routine, went to bed. Well, the very, very next morning, I was in the kitchen with my boyfriend. We were still in our pajamas super early in the morning, and he reached over, touched my face, and gave me a kiss. And he noticed that my face felt tight. Like I had had like a facelift or like Botox overnight. Now he was not aware that I had done the face mask. He didn't even know that it had come in the mail the day before. And I said, interesting. I literally just did the ASEA face mask and I went to look in the mirror and it had appeared overnight that my skin had tightened. Now, yes, I am 40 years old, so I'm kind of at that hinge age, right? I'm still young, but I'm moving into middle age. And so I am even more aware now about what I do to my skin as I enter into the latter part of my life. Since that first time using it, I've used it a couple of more times. And absolutely, I am feeling a difference. It really feels like I have had just someone pull the skin back. It's unbelievable. And so you can order the mask on its own. I actually have a couple more masks coming to me because I wanted to stock up. That's how good this mask is. Or you can get the bundle along with the brush. Personally, I have not used the brush, nor did I order the brush. I just use my hands. Or if you want, you can order a bundle of either your personal spa day with the with the lotion, which I do have this lotion as well, or you can come over here, the ultimate gift for mom. We know Mother's Day is coming up. 
or if you just want to send your mom a gift because you know what you wouldn't be here without your mama or you could actually just order this for yourself but the mask again the mask is really something special because it really uh, after the first use i noticed a difference and so did my boyfriend so if this is something that you're interested in please look down in the description box below and you will see a link to the asia website where you can read more about the mask or all the other products that are offered by ASEA. If you would like more information on ASEA, what the products can do for you, what products would be best for you, how to get ASEA at a wholesale price, then you can text Bryce Info, B R I C E Info to 321 216 8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to the telephone number 321 216 8047. If you are texting from another country, please make sure you add plus one. 321-216-8047. Not sure if the mask is available in other countries just yet. I know they're planning on releasing it to other countries, but some of the other products are definitely available in other countries. So please just text Bryce Info to the number listed below. Again, all that information is down in the description box. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we are going to be doing a deep dive into Mount Kumara, Japan. so excited to be back to my deep dives this is truly this is why i started my channel i started my channel doing deep dives on folklore and of course i've it's grown in so many awesome directions but the deep dives the research that's obviously the heart of esoteric atlanta so i'm super excited to be talking to you guys today about this particular mountain in japan now this day this deep dive is not going to be as intense or deep as a lot of our other deep dives frankly because I couldn't find enough information to really give me a full extent of the story. I know that there's a lot of pieces missing and I do think Sunat Kumara did give us a little bit of a hint as to what might be missing. But of course, when I looked into this mountain, I was not surprised to see that not only has Sunat Kumara had this amazing experience on this mountain, but so many other relatively famous people and famous spiritual experiences has happened on this mountain in Japan. Japan is turning out to be one of these island countries that is packed full of these crazy, insane, good, insane portals or magical places. It's, it's such a small country and to see all these different things coming out of Japan is unbelievable. And I am hoping, I know most of my demographic on this channel is Americans, Canadians, English from Great Britain, Scottish, Irish, and Australians. I do know that I have a lot of other Europeans scattered throughout for my demographics, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we have some Japanese people in the esoteric Atlanta community, or if not Japanese themselves, maybe some of you guys live in Japan and can kind of fill in some of the blanks here, or if you've spent some time in Japan and you've been to this particular mountain, I would love to hear your experiences. Please let me know down in the comment section below. I will tell you guys a little something something. There are two big trips, like big trips I'm planning at the moment. One, one big trip I'm planning is back to Australia. I've been in communication, obviously. I'm in communication with Tamara a lot. And that is something that we are planning. Um, of course, there's a, we don't really know the dates yet because of, of this, right? Just got to make sure that everything's okay. But that's something that's in the works. And my boyfriend and I are also talking about planning a trip to Japan. Both my boyfriend and I are world travelers. We, even before we met each other, we're, we're world travelers, but Japan is a place that neither one of us have been to. And so um, he has a client that is uh, Japanese and that w had volunteered to go with us um, and translate for us and, and help be our personal guides. So that is also something we're planning. And I literally, if I get to go to Japan, I will stay there for a while because I want to see all of these places because, wow, like this country has so many unique 
spiritual places to go to and to experience. And so I'm so happy to be able to start to share some of these stories. Of course, we have covered some Japanese stories here on this channel before. I believe we covered suicide forests on this channel. I know we covered it on Aquarius Rising Africa, but I, I think I covered it on my channel as well. I'll put a link to that down in the description box below. I'll also put a link to the Sanat Kumara channelings down in the description box below in case you missed that. Okay, so let's talk about Mount Kumara, Japan. Mount Kumara is north of the Japanese city Kyoto. And I was shocked, but not shocked, at the same time, that this is the mountain that Dr. Yusui, back in 1922, meditated on for 21 days. And of course, if you are in the healing arts, you know exactly who Dr. Yusui is. He is the founder of Modern Day Reiki. I will include my friend Tiffany's discussion on Reiki and the history of Reiki also down in the description box below. That's an older video we did. But to make a long story short, while meditating on Mount Kumara in 1922 for 21 days, he received the universal energy of Reiki, which of course Reiki has been around a lot longer than Dr. Yusui, but we went through a great forgetting. You know, we know that Yashua, we know a lot of these older Ascended Master used Reiki healings back in the day, but of course we forgot it. Dr. Yusui is kind of the one responsible for bringing this practice of Reiki medicine back to life. Mount Kumara is also the home of the Kumara Temple, which is one of Japan's most famous and most important temples. And this is kind of this is what's super interesting. Okay, so I, I read a lot of web websites. I'll put some of those links down in the description box below. And I watched some of the travel documentaries. And the way they have Mount Kumara set up is it's very user-friendly. They have a, a trail you can actually go and get a ticket and take the trail all the way up to Kumara Temple, which we'll talk about what happens on that trail. Or you could even get a cable car up to the top of the mountain. I personally would walk it. Um, I've done Chumundi Hill in India multiple times. I've, I've obviously taken rickshaws up to Chumundi Hill, and I've also done the uh, thousand stair hike up um, Chumundi Hill as well. So there is something just from my experience of India doing Chumundi Hill, where there's a temple at the top of that that as well i know that there's value into actually using your physical body to get to the shrine get to the temple and of course as i said when you're going up the path along the way there's all these different things that you can see and explore and these beautiful views of the countryside of japan now this is super fascinating from what i found going back to what sunat kumara said about landing on this mountain we have references from japanese literature that it is believed that six million years ago a being called mao sun came to mount kumara from drum roll please venus now, I don't know if Mao Sun and Sunat Kumara are perhaps the same people. I, I try to find, but there does seem to be a, a great connection to these two events. Again, the one spoken about by Sunat Kumara and the story of Mao Sun, this being that came from Venus. And he was considered to be this great king, Mao Sun. And not only was he a great king, but he, kind of one of his special powers was to defeat evil spirits. Now, I know in the book with Sunat Kumar, there is a timeline, a time period giving, as well as there is a time period given with Mal Sun, the six million years, all that kind of stuff. But as you guys know, I don't really take these dates or these years real seriously, unless it's like close to our modern history, because we know things have been confused and we know we had a thousand years added into our timeline. So, so there is a possibility that these two events with Sunat Kumar and Mao Sun could potentially be the same, the same thing. I, I'm, I'm not discounting that because it's very interesting that, that they even recognize in Japanese literature that there was a being from Venus 
no less, that came to our planet. Of course, in multiple cultures, we have stories of beings from the cosmos or other planets or the heavens, the angels, whatever you want to call them, coming down, ascending upon Earth. But to specifically say Venus, I found thought was rather, rather interesting. On top of that, there is more of a modern mystical history with this mountain. Now, they say the Kumara Temple itself was founded in 770 AD, 77, that's a god number, as the guardian of the north part of the capital city. Now, it is believed that the original temple is right where the Kumara Temple stands today. Of course, the original temple is no longer there. They've had to rebuild and rebuild and create and recreate, but it is on the same location. Now, they say that if you visit the temple and you actually go into the temple, that you will see a very special papyrus account of the history of the mountain. And I'm not even going to attempt to say the name of this, this papyrus because I, I don't want to disrespect the Japanese culture, but I'll put the name of it right here on the screen for you guys to see because I have no idea. I tried to pronounce it and my pronunciation ca came out sounding more Sanskritish than it did Japanese because as you guys know, I do speak Sanskrit. So it just sounded more Indian than it did Japanese. So I just want to be respectful. So I'm just going to put the word here up on the screen for you to look up and study yourself if that's something you feel inclined to do. Now, this particular story, this ancient story, um, is is dated back to 770 AD. So that's why we kind of know that that's when the modern day founding of this temple took place. Now, I do know that just like the French and the English have issues with each other, the Japanese and the Chinese, and they also kind of have issues with each other. So I thought this was comical. Of course, you know, God, God has a sense of humor. So the legend goes that there was a Chinese monk that has, had made his way to Japan in order to study with a very renowned guru, right, in Japan. And this Chinese monk was so dedicated to the teachings of this guru that he actually ended up staying in the guru's house long after the guru had passed away. Well, one night, this Chinese monk was in a dream, was told that he needed to travel north to a very special mountain where there were great healing powers. Now, prior to the monk going to this mountain because of the dream, the dream told him that the mountain had been protected by a entity called a Tengu. Now, the Tengu I find to be fascinating as well. I love all these like mystical creatures that come from all these different cultures. As as a white girl from Georgia, I, I just find this fascinating. And, 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 and rightly so, every culture has these kind of mystical creatures that aren't really of this earth. Like, you know, here, here in America, we got you know, the Chupacabra or the Jersey Devil, you know, over, so over in Japan, they have this Tengu. And I I, can't, I don't know if the Tengu is good or bad. I can't, but of course, you know, all beings have shades of gray because in some accounts, they're, they're known to eat children, but in some accounts, they're not. They're just guards. Um, some of the stories say that the Tengu came with Mao Sun when he came from Venus. I, I listen, listen, if we got to get any Japanese, Japanese people or people who have spent extensive time in Japan and know more about this. I would love to hear more about the Tengu from your perspective down in the comment section below. But this is what I have learned about the Tengu. So once again, the Tengu are mystical figures from Japanese folklore. They have a very long nose and they embody the spiritual powers of the mountain. So this Chinese monk that kind of was the starting point of the modern day celebration um, visits to the mountain knew when he got to the mountain that the mountain had been, was currently guarded by this species. Now, the species of the Tengu are said to still guard the mountain to this day. And if, if you go to Mount Kumara, you allegedly will see a bunch of statues of these Tengu all over the mountain. So I guess they're still guarding the mountain. And I guess when this Chinese monk came, they're like, oh yeah, you're the guy. 
we're going to let you in and we're going to remind the people that this mountain is very, very important and has been for a very long time. I mean, they say the mountain is huge with spiritual energy and spiritual practices, hence why Dr. Yusui in 1922 got remembered the power of Reiki healing. But I also, in my opinion, believe there's probably a portal here too. That's why there's all these mystical creatures and all these, you know, stories and legends. I think things can actually enter into human domain from this mountain. That's just my opinion, though. I do want to say something interesting as well and this kind of goes back to this scuffle between the Japanese and the Chinese and the Chinese monk being the one to kind of reopen up the mountain Japan is called the land of the rising sun where I live in Georgia this is called the house of the rising sun so that's something we have in common but we're not talking about Georgia today we're talking about Japan now, why is Japan called the land of the rising sun? Well, they get this nickname from the Chinese because when the Chinese would go north to Japan or look north, that's where they would see the sun rise. And we know that the sun is also a very, very important energy. I was about to say planet. It's not a planet. We know the sun is a portal. Um, if you even see photos from NASA, you see things coming and going from the sun so you could say okay well the chinese call this that uh, the land of the rising sun just because it appears like the sun is rising but i think there's more to it than that i don't think it's just because they saw the sun rising and said oh that's where japan is that's where that that island is i think there's also some deeper connection here between all these spots in japan that appear to be portals and the sun so another famous person who has a lot of ties to Mount Kumara, well, famous for the Japanese, wasn't famous for me, and I hope to God I'm saying this person's name right. The man named Minioto Yoshitsune was one of the most famous samurais in Japan. Okay, he lived from 1159 to June 15th, 1189. So, again, I'm not so sold on dates, but we're just going to go with what we know. So, at this point where this samurai was being, going around samurai and being this famous samurai in Japan, still today one of the world's, or Japan's most famous samurais, by the way, over almost a thousand years later, he's still one of Japan's most famous samurais. Um, at this time, this was over where William of Orange was conquering Great Britain in 1066. He came in and conquered Great Britain, bringing about the royal family that we know today. So just to kind of parallel what time period this is happening, William of Orange conquered a little bit before before the samurai, but still kind of the same window of time here. So he trained on Mount Kumara to become this incredible samurai. And lo and behold, who trained him? Wasn't a human who trained him. The person, the entity, the being, the humanoid that trained him was the king of the Tengu. The things with the long nose that guard, that guard the mountain. That's who trained this samurai. And, you know, people could say, oh, this is just folklore. This is silly, you know, superstition. He he didn't really train with the Tangu. He was just a famous, he was just really good at his job. You know, he's a famous warrior. And so, of course, when famous people, people with extraordinary talent live, we tend to create a lot of mysticism around their existence. But I'm not so sure about that anymore. Like, I mean, I, I, folklore has got to come from somewhere. So at some point in our history, this is what this is what this tells me. At some point in our history, human beings could see beyond the veil veil better than we see beyond the veil now. And so, I mean, think about this, you guys. Like, okay, so it's 2023. Listen, I see spirits. Everybody knows I see ghosts. I see all sorts of stuff. I have here Magdalene. She's one of my guides. But if I were to go to this mountain in Japan and a Tengu were to start talking to me, I would probably crap my pants. I don't, I mean, how freaky is that? So the fact that this samurai was able to train with the Tengu, to me, says that they were already kind of, there was already a communication happening, right? It wasn't that weird at that point in history. And again, this 
you know, a few hundred years earlier, when this in 770, when this Chinese monk went to kind of reestablish this mountain, um, he knew that the Tengu was there. So, you know, riddle me that, Batman. Like we we tend to the more advanced we come in technology in our modern world, I feel like the more separate we really come from understanding the spiritual world. Now, as I said, when you're walking up the path to the main temple, you, there's lots of other things to see along the way. And some of these are what they call Shinto shrines. Now, Shinto, the Shinto faith is like the OG main faith of Japan. Shinto literally translates to the ways of the gods. It is Japan's native belief system predating any known historical records. The Shintos want to promote harmony and purity in all life. They believe that humans are basically good and evil is only caused by evil spirits. I mean, I, like a lot of you watching, grew up in a Christian home where we were taught from a very young age that humans are literally sacks of shit. We're just worthless and we're nothing without God. And of course, Christianity to this day is one of the most violent religions that you will ever run across. It's got more blood on its hand than Satanism does. But um, could you imagine, like if you were raised Christian, could you imagine if you were actually raised in religion that said, you know what? Humans are basically good. You're all right. You're good. I just I think that would bring about so much peace as a child because I believe that. I believe that humans are basically good. There's only a few that are well, we got 50% organic portals. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we screw up from time to time and we do selfish things from time to time, but at the heart of it all, that's why we feel guilt is because we are basically good. But it's interesting that these Shinto shrines are there because again, we have the story of Mao Sun, who was this king from Venus who was known to defeat evil spirits. And the Shinto believed that evil is caused by evil spirits. Now, for many, many generations, from my understanding, Buddhism and the Shinto faith were very much interlocked in Japan. And I'm not super familiar with the Japanese history, but I do know at some point they were separated. However, they do seem to coexist within this mountain. So as you're going up the mountain and you're doing all these things, you are seeing a lot of the Buddhist influence, but you're also seeing the Shinto influence right beside the Buddhist influence. So it's kind of cool. Like, things can coexist. Now I save the coolest thing for last. This really, really fascinated me. And so when you get to the top of the mountain and you're at the Kumara temple, if you look down, there is stone symbol with a triangle in the middle of it. It kind of represents again, like these, the pyramid, yeah? Now again, I'm gonna reiterate, if you're new here, you might wanna listen. Darkness, darkness cannot create anything. So if you're one of those people that wants to take down the pyramids and the obelisk because you think it's evil, girlfriend, you are giving the darkness way too much credit. It cannot create anything. It, it can only steal from the light and invert. So all of these symbols, these things that we think the darkness uses, it wasn't theirs to use to begin with. So our job, you know, the god of the darkness is Lucifer. And Lucifer is the god of destruction and chaos. The god of the light, the true source god, is the god of healing, mercy, and grace. Right? So it's our job to purify and, and take back what is ours. And if we got rid of everything that the darkness manipulated legit we would have absolutely nothing left and I'm sorry I, I don't want to give up what God made for good I'm gonna take it back so this triangle that's on the floor on the ground in front of the temple is said to be a very magical spot could this be the portal I don't know but the triangle itself has many representations the three points of the triangle are meant to represent truth, mercy, and cosmic energy. If we multiply three times two, we get the number six. And six is also significant to this symbol. The six points represent the six ways in which we interact with the world around us. One is the eyes, two is the ears, three is the nose, four is the mouth, five is the body, and six is the heart. They say if you stand on it and face the temple, you will be filled with your own power from within. 
this space, this place right in front of the temple activates your own cosmic energy. So again, it's not giving you cosmic energy. You already got that. It just needs to be activated. It's it's a lot like the Sophia code that I spoke about with Cindy and Angie yesterday. And if you missed that, I will place that down in the description box below. You cannot be given anything. You already possess it. All that needs to happen is it needs to be activated. So I really like that what that what that was it, you guys. That was the thing that was like, I, I must go there. I must go to this mountain. I must go. And I said something to my boyfriend about it. And he was like, yeah, let's plan a trip. And so I started looking up flights. <laughs> so, so again, we're not going anytime soon. We have to figure out this situation and what's going on. And I'm, I'm not super, I'm not a super fan of flying right now because I don't know if the pilots had one of these. So, but that is a plan for us to go in the future to, um, to, 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 to travel around Japan um, to see these sites. All right, you guys. So that's what I got for you today. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Again, I'm so excited to be getting back to my deep dives. This is truly, truly, truly what I love to do the most. Also, Despite deep dives, I also have some really cool guests that are coming back, are coming on the channel. This guy who designed this t-shirt that I'm wearing right now, I just got it yesterday given, so it's a little wrinkly, but um, he is a tattoo artist, actually, a very, very, very famous tattoo artist uh, that is also very knowledgeable about a lot of the stuff we talk about on this channel, a lot of the deep dives we do on this channel. He has traveled the world and is, of course, being a tattoo artist, he has met so many different people. And so he is going to be coming on, hopefully he'll be coming on multiple times to discuss some of the topics that he ha himself has researched into, including things like Tartaria, geometric patternings, all that kind of stuff. And so I'm super excited. His first name is Watson. My last name is Watson. It's great. So he will be coming on shortly soon whenever he can. I told him whenever he was ready just to let me know. Um, that Those episodes most definitely will be on the other website. That's how I have to say it because if you missed Monday's episode, I'll put that down in the description box below as well because there are certain things we cannot do or say on this platform anymore uh, at risk of losing this platform. We have to be very careful. So again, some of the more potent stuff will be going on the other website that starts with an R and ends with an umble. So you just look for Esoteric Atlanta on that platform. Make sure you are subscribed there as well. Make sure you're subscribed to your own YouTube so that when I do have to put separate stuff there, I can't warn you here on this channel anymore. It has to just directly go there. So to make sure that you are subscribed there too. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. I'll be back on with the uh, solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa to do um, to finish up half four today at 1230 Eastern time. So please make sure that you are subscribed to solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa if you want to participate in those conversations. If by chance we're ever running late with the live shows with Aquarius Rising Africa or solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa, it's because of load shedding. They go through a lot of load shedding in South Africa, so the internet isn't available during that time. So don't worry if you ever kind of miss it. Just go and check back later and you can see the replay. All right, you guys, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon.